I'm going to read you guys um, a chapter from the book, And the Truth Shall Set You Free, by David Icke. I'm going to start with chapter 10. Um, it's called The Super Elite, The Black Magician. At the highest level of the elite human pyramid, I believe they do know that they are working with the fourth dimensional consciousness, which has been known symbolically by many names, such as Satan, Set, Lucifer, the Devil, and in this book, The Prison Water. At this top level, they are knowingly interacting with this force, which probably takes many forms. There's evidence that many people involved over the years have believed that they were working for extraterrestrial Superman. Some may have had face-to-face -face contact with the negative ET group from the fourth dimension. To understand the true nature of the conspiracy, we need to appreciate its esoteric foundation. Esoteric knowledge, often called the occult, is not negative in or of itself. It is just the knowledge of the potential to harness the energies of creation for good or ill and the understanding of the human psyche and how it can be balanced, healed, or manipulated. It is not the knowledge that is good or bad. It is the way we use it. People at the highest levels of the elite Illuminati Brotherhood Network are often members of extreme sects based on ancient rites and Lucifer Satan worship. Yes, Satanists run the world. If you infiltrated some of these bizarre gatherings, I'm sure you would see some famous faces. The security services such as the CIA and U.S. military intelligences are seriously infiltrated by sects that worship these various names for the prison ward or consciousness. Lieutenant Colonel Michael Aquino, a senior officer within the U.S. military intelligence, formed the Temple of Set but when this was made public, the authorities said they saw no problem. During the Second World War, the elite's esoteric tradition was at work on both sides. President Roosevelt, who was a 33rd degree Freemason, also had the esoteric name, the Knights of Pythia, and wore the red fez of the ancient Arabic order of nobles of the mystic shrine. This organization claims to be connected with the Illuminati. Winston Churchill, the British Prime Minister, was a Freemason and had several meetings with the Satanist Aleister Crowley, another esoteric guru and high initiate of many orders, including the Order of the Golden Dawn and the Order of Oriental Templars. More on him later. Churchill's meeting with Crowley do not, of course, constitute proof that the, Prime, the British Prime Minister was a Satanist. But it does show that behind the scenes, esoteric knowledge in all of its forms is taken far more seriously than it is in public. This was the case during Elizabethan times and also has been throughout human history. The two greatest creations of the black magicians in the 20th century have been the Soviet Union and Nazi Germany. If I take the example of Adolf Hitler, the Nazis, you will get an idea of the mindset of those who control the elite today. This story is not unique to Hitler's Germany. Behind the public faces, its themes could be told again and again within regimes, both authoritarian and democratic across the world. Germany has long been a center for esoteric thinking and the secret society societies this knowledge seemed to spawn. It was from this philosophical stream that Hitler and his crazed followers would emerge. One of the pre-Hitler prophets was the composer Richard Ragnar in the 19th century. His composition, The Ride of the Val Valkyries, captures his obsession with the invading powers of evil. Wagner declared the imminent arrival of the master race. His work, The Ring, was the musical expression of his belief in German Superman bestriding the world stage like the ancient pagan gods, Wotan and Thor. Hitler would later say that to understand Nazi Germany, one would have to know Wagner. One of the students of master race fanatic, Wagner was Gustav Mahler, whose studies with Wagner were found by Baron Albert 
the Rothschild. Adolf Hitler was officially born at Ronnen and Inn on the border of Germany and Austria-Hungary Empire. But the amazing story of who he really was will be told in a later book when I've compiled the evidence. The esoteric was to become a consuming passion for Hitler, especially in his rise to power. He was strongly influenced by the work of Helena Petrovana Blavatsky, who was born in the Ukraine in 1831. Some researchers claim she had connections with the secret society of Italian revolutionaries, the Carbonari, who were closely linked to the black nobility, and she was a member of the Egyptian society, the Brotherhood of Luxor, which she later denounced as a den for disgusting immorality, greediness, and selfish power money-making. Madame Blavatsky arrived in New York in 1873, and with the help of Colonel Henry Occult, she founded the Theosophical Society two years later. This is still around today. Its doctrines are based on Blavatsky's books, such as Isis Unveiled, which was written in 1877, and The Secret Doctrine, published in 1888. She claimed to be a psychic in contact with hidden masters of Superman. These hidden masters, she said, lived in Central Asia and could be contacted telepathically by those who knew the secrets to the esoteric mysteries. Today we call this process of communication channeling. There are many UFO sightings and much, re much research which indicates that there are secret underground and underwater bases for extraterrestrials around the world. Central Asia among them. I'm not saying that Blavatsky was negative, only that Hitler was influenced by her work. The belief in the masters and the great white brotherhood of dis disincarnate en entities promoted by people like the theosophical psychic of the post Blavatsky period, Alice Bailey, is a theme that remains well entrenched in parts of what is known today as the New Age movement. Alice Bailey claimed to channel an entity she called the Tibetan and she produced a number of books, including Hierarchy of the Masters, The Seven Rays, A New Group of World Servers, and New World Religion. She said that her Tibetan master had told her the Second World War was necessary to defend the plan of God. That sounds ridiculous to me, but there are many in the New Age field who believe that everything is meant to be and is the will of God, even a global holocaust. It seems like a great excuse to do nothing and to cop out, uh, and a cop out of major proportions. My own view is that the masters, the great white brotherhood, and this whole concept is something to be very weary of. However, I hear the term master, I cringe. Two organizations linked to Alice Bailey's work, the Lucius Trust and the Good, and the World Goodwill Organization are both staunch promoters of the United Nations amongst you and groupies, such as their devotion. I will discuss these further in a later chapter. The more I go into this, it is interesting to see how the New Age has inherited truths over the decades in the same way that conventional religion has done over the centuries. As the followers of Christianity have inherited the manipulated version of Jesus, so New Agers have inherited the Masters. There is too little checking of origins, too much acceptance of inherited beliefs, I think. If the New Age isn't careful, it will be Christianity revisited. It is already becoming so. I believe this concept of masters can be a means through which those who have, quite rightly in my view, rejected the status quo of religion and science can still have their minds controlled by the prison borders of the fourth dimension. Another big influence on Hitler was the novel The Coming Race by the Englishman Lord Edward Baldwin. Lighten, a British colonial minister heavily involved in imposing opium addiction on the Chinese. He was a close friend of Desirelli and Dickens and grand patron of the English Rosicrucian Society, which included Francis Bacon and John Dee in its early membership. Boyle Lytton is best known for his work, The Last Days of Pompeii, but his passion was the world of esoteric magic and as a British colonial minister, for running opium to the Chinese. In the coming race, he wrote of an enormous civilization inside the earth, well ahead of our own. They had discovered a powerful 
uh, they they had discovered a power called Vrio, which by the use of the psyche could be used to perform miracles. These underground supermen would, according to Bolo Litton, his novel, emerge to the surface one day and take control of the world. Many Nazis believed uh, in this. Lord Buller Lytton is often referred to by Madame Blavatsky in her book, Isis Unveiled. The things of underground Superman or hidden masters can be found in most of the esoteric secret societies. Certainly, this was true of the Order of the Golden Dawn, formed in 1888 by Dr. Wynne Westcott, a Freemason, and S.L. Mathers. They called their masters the secret chiefs. The theme of extraterrestrials living underground fit in with the 1960 survey of contactees who detailed the stories of the pure Melchizedekian race with their blonde hair and blue eyes. They were also said to be living inside the earth. Mathers devised a series of rituals and initiations and designed them to help his members access their full psychic and physical potential. He believed, however, that the gift was only for the few, and he was a supporter of authoritarian government. These rituals, no doubt, would have attracted the dark energies which allowed vibrational synchronization or possession by the warders. In the mid-1890s, there were temples of the order in London, Edinburgh, Bradford, Weston, Supermar, and Paris, where Mathers made his home. The Order of the Golden Dawn also spoke of the real force, and one of the Order's secret signs was the salute, which the Nazis would use when saying Hail Hitler. These esoteric foundations on which Nazism was created continued to build. Mathers had known Madame Blavatsky, and so had the masters of the Order's London Temple, the poet William Butler, Yeats, um, who would go on to win a Nobel Prize. Yeats' view of utopia mirror that of Adolf Hitler or Joseph Stalin. The poet spoke of an aristocratic civilization in its most completed form, every detail of life hierarchical, every great man's door crowded at dawn by petitioners, great wealth everywhere in few men's hands, all dependent upon a few, upon the emperor himself, who is a god dependent upon a greater god, and everywhere in court, in the family, an inequality made law. Remnants of the Order of the Golden Dawn continue to this day, but the original version splintered after a row between Yeats, Mathers, and Aleister Crowley, which split the membership into quarreling factions. Other significant exoteric thinkers and groups which influenced the gathering Nazi philosophy included the Order of the Oriental Temple, which used sex as part of its rituals to create and harness the energy known as Brio, and two German esoteric magicians, Gato van Liszt and Lanz von Liebenfeld. In his summer solstice celebrations, Lisch used wine bottles on the ground to form the symbol of the Hermetic Cross, also known as the Hammer of Thor. It was the badge of power in the Order of the Golden Dawn, and we know this symbol as the swastika. Lanz von Liebenfeld, his real name Adolf Lanz, Lanz featured the swastika on the flag which flew over his temple overlooking the Danube. And for these two black magicians, it symbolized the end of Christianity and the dawning of the age of the Aryan supermen. They believed in the racial inferiority of those they called the dark forces, such as the Jews, the Slavs, and the Negroes. Libenfels recommended castration for those people. The two Vons, List and Libenfels, or to have a massive influence on Adolf Hitler. In 1932, with Hitler on the verge of power, von Liebenfels would write to a fellow believer, Hitler is one of our pupils. You will one day experience that he, and through him we, will one day be victorious and develop a movement that will make the world tremble. Two others would influence the thinking and beliefs of Adolf Hitler. They were Englishman Aleister Crowley and Houston Stewart Chamberlain. Crowley was born in Warwickshire in 1875. He rebelled against a strict religious upbringing and was initiated into the Order of the Golden Dawn in 1898 after leaving Cambridge University. He left the Order after the role with its founders and then traveled to Mexico, India, and Ceylon 
where he was introduced to yoga and Buddhism. He also became a record-breaking mountaineer. Buddhism replaced his interest in the occult until an experience in Cairo in 1904. Prolister was asked by his wife, Rose, to perform an esoteric ritual to see what happened. During the ceremony, she entered a trance-like state and began to channel the world, I'm sorry, the words of a communicator. They are waiting for you, she said to Crawley. The day, she said, was Horus, the god of war, and the son of Orias, I'm sorry, Osiris, an Egyptian, ancient Egyptian belief. Crawley did not accept any of this and asked his wife a series of detailed questions in an effort to trick her. But Rose, who knew little of the esoteric, gave the correct answers every time. I believe the prison warders were on the line again. The communicator told Crawley to be at a desk in his hotel room between noon and one o'clock on three specific days. He agreed and in those periods he wrote via automatic writing, a document called the Book of the Law. Automatic writing is when your arm and hand are guided by another force and often no one is more surprised at what they are writing than the person involved. Crawley's communication said that the old age of Osiris was being replaced by the new age of Horus. But it said the old age would first have to be destroyed by barbarism and the earth ba bathed in blood. There would be a war, war, it said. The Book of the Law talked of a race of Superman and condemned the old religion, pacifism, democracy, compassion, and humanitarianism. Let my servants be few and secret. They shall rule the many and the known, the Superman continued. The message went on. We have nothing with the outcasts and the unfit. Let them die in the misery, for they feel not. Compassion is the vice of kings. Stamp down the wretched and the weak. This is the law of the strong. This is the law and the joy of the world. Love one another with burning hearts. On the low man trample in the fierce lust of your pride. In the day of your wrath, pity not the fallen. I never knew them. I am not for them. I console not. I hate the consoled and the consoler. I am unique and conqueror. I am not of the slaves that perish. Be they damned and dead. Amen. Therefore strike hard and low into hell with them, master. Lurk. Withdraw. Upon them. This is the law of the battle of conquest. Thus shall my worship be about my secret house. Worship me with fire and blood. Worship me with swords and with spears. Let the women be grit with a sword before me. Let blood flow in my name. Trample down the heathen, be upon them. O warrior, I will give you their flesh to eat. Sacrifice cattle, little and big. After a child, kill and torture, spare not, be upon them. If that sounds remarkably like some of the angry God stuff of the Old Testament, that's because it was almost certainly the same force on the fourth dimension, which communicated to the ancients, to Crawley, and to anyone else that vibration uh, who could help to stimulate the conflict. I'm sorry, and to anyone else on that vibration who would help to stimulate the conflict and the energy of human misery on which the prison, prison warders fed. This is the force that controls the consciousness of those which control the global elite Illuminati Brotherhood. And it is the focus of worship in the all seeing eye cult going back to ancient times. The communicator said to Crawley was the B666 who had come to destroy Christianity, something his mother had said earlier in his life. He apparently tried to ignore what had been written with his guided hand, but it would not go away. And from 1909 on, he began to take it seriously. Very seriously, he said. After five years of folly and weakness, miscalled politeness, tact, discretion, care for the feelings of other, I am weary of it. I say today to hell with Christianity, rationalism, Buddhism, all the lumber of the century. I bring you a positive and primitive fact, magic by name, and which is, I will build me a new heaven and new earth. I want none of your faint approval or faint dispraise. I want blasphemy, murder, rape, revolution, anything bad or good, but strong. Crawley left this former tutor, Gregor Matthews, a broken man, as he embarked on a psychic war against him. They both conjured up the demons to attack the others, but Matthews lost out. Such psychic wars are very much part of the Brotherhood today. 
Crowley's, Crowley's communicator, the prison warder, consciousness, would also take over the psyches of Adolf Hitler and the other architects of Nazism. Long after his death, Crowley would become a hero to many involved in the flower power period of the 1960s, when the young were calling for love and peace. The irony is not lost. Crowley welcomed the First World War as necessary to sweep away the old age and usher in the new one. After going public with his revelation, Crowley was made the world head of the German, Germany-based Order of the Oriental Temple, OTO, and this gave him very significant influence among like thinkers in Germany. Houston Stewart Chamberlain was born in England in 1855, but moved to Germany in 1882. He married Eva and their daughter Richard he married Eva, the daughter of Richard Wagner, in 1908 and became a prestigious writer. His best known work was The Foundation of the 19th Century, which ran on 12, which ran to 1,200 pages and sold more than 250,000 copies. It made him famous throughout the country. He was, however, a troubled man who had a series of nervous breakdowns. He felt himself to be taken over by demons, and his books were written in a trance and a fever. Uh, which suggests that he was locked into another highly negative consciousness, the prison ward of consciousness again. In his autobiography, he said he did not recognize much of his writing as his own. The themes of his work were very familiar. All civilizations come from an Aryan race and the Germans were the purest of all. Jews were the enemies who would, be pol who would pollute the Aryan bloodline. Kaiser Wilhelm II and Adolf Hitler said Chamberlain was a prophet. Chamberlain became the principal advisor to Kaiser Wilhelm and urged the king to go to war in 1914 to fulfill the prophecy of Germany's world domination. When the war was when the war when the war was over and Wilhelm had abdicated to an estate in Holland, he realized how he'd been manipulated. He gathered together massive books on the occult and the German secret societies, and he was convinced that they had conspired to create the First World War and cause Germany to be defeated. Chamberlain, who had been awarded the Iron Cross by the Kaiser, died in 1927 after years in a wheelchair, broken in body and spirit. But his influence was so. But his influence was to live on in the mind of Adolf Hitler. Chamberlain, incidentally, was introduced to Hitler by Alfred Rosenberg, the refugee from Russia, and another Satanist figure. Satanism is merely the worship of and possession by the negative manipulators of the fourth dimension. It was Rosenberg, despite his Jewish background, who gave a copy of the Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion to Hitler via another occultist, Dietrich Eckhart, the all-seeing eye occult at work again. These were some of the people and beliefs that molded the thinking of the man claiming to be a young Austrian born with the name Schicklegruber, or later rather better known as Adolf Hitler. Hill Schicklengruber would not have been, uh, would not have had the same ring to it. He hated school, the official story goes, and wanted to be an artist, an ambition which took him to Vienna. He spent hours in the libraries reading books on astrology, mysticism, and the religions of the East. He was fascinated by the books, books on Blavatsky, Chamberlain, Liszt, and Lebensfeld. He picked out bits from each of them to produce his preferred mixture a cocktail of horror and hatred that would manifest as Nazism. His passion was the power of the will. The potential of real power to achieve anything it desired was to be his focus and guide throughout the years that followed. Put another way, creating your own reality. He practiced the esoteric arts in his effort to access the level of consciousness he was convinced would turn him into one of the supermen he had read so much about and believed in so much. His psyche became locked into the prison ward of vibration more powerfully than before. He was possessed, probably during some black esoteric ritual which opened his psyche to the malevolent vibration. You only have to look at his beliefs to see that he would have been a vibrational compatibility with these consciousness. It was now that an uncharismatic and ineffectual man would begin to exude the charisma and magnetism that would captivate and intoxicate a nation. We talk of some people having magnetism and magnetic personalities, and that is exactly what he had. 
We are all generating magnetic energies and these attract to us the energies, people, places, etc. that relate to what is going on in our subconscious. Some people transmit powerful magnetism and others less so. Negative energies are just as magnetic as positive ones. Those connected to and therefore generating the extreme prison water vibration will be very magnetic. You often hear highly negative people described as having a magnetic personality or fatal attraction. And this is why. It is also where the magnetism and charisma of Adolf Hitler suddenly came from. When he was standing on the public platform with his contorted face and crazed delivery, he was channeling the prison water, luciferic consciousness from the fourth dimension, and transmitting this vibration to the vast crowds. This affected the vibrational state of the people attracted by it and turned them into equally crazed agents of hatred. It is the pi type of principle using a vibration instead of a pipe. As the writer, as the writer Alan Bullock said of Hitler, his power to bewitch an audience has been linked to the occult art of the African medicine man or the Asiatic shaman. Others have compared it to the sensitivity of a medium and the magnetism of a hypnotist. And Hermann Rauschenegg, an aide to Hitler, said in his book, Hitler Speaks, one cannot help thinking of him as a medium. But most of the time, mediums are ordinary, insignificant people. Certainly they are endowed with what seems to be supernatural powers that set them apart from the rest of humanity. The medium is possessed. Once the crisis is passed, they fall back again into mediocrity. It was in this way, beyond any doubt, that Hitler was possessed by forces outside of himself, almost demonically, almost demonical forces, of which the individual named Hitler was only the temporary vehicle. The mixture of the banal and the supernatural created that insupportable duality of which one was conscious in his present. present. It was like looking at a bizarre face whose expression seemed to reflect an unbalanced state of mind coupled with a disquieting, disquieting impression of hidden power. Hitler was under the control of the prison warders and he appeared to live in perpetual fear of these supermen. Rauschenegg told how Hitler suffered from terrible nightmares and would wake in terror screaming about entities who were invisible to all but him. He once said to his aide, what will the social order of the future be like? Comrade, I will tell you. There will be a class of overlords, after them the rank and file of the party members in hierarchical order, and then the great mass of anonymous followers, service, service and workers in perpetuality, and beneath them again all the conquered foreign races, the modern slaves. And over and above all these will reign a new and exalted nobility of whom I cannot speak. But of all these plans, the militant members will know nothing. The new man is living amongst us now. He is here. Isn't that enough for you? I will tell you a secret. I have seen the new man. He is intrepid and cruel. I was afraid of him. After Hitler moved to Germany, he spent a lot of time in Bavaria from where Weisschup's Illuminati had sprung. And he returned there in 1918 after fighting in the war. Or at least that's the official line. The following year, he came across a tiny and rather pathetic political party called the German Workers' Party. This was an offshoot of an esoteric secret society called the German Order, which was fiercely nationalistic and anti-Jewish. Out of this order came other similar societies, including the infamous Thule Society. Thule uh, was supposed to be an ancient lost civilization of Nordic people with blonde hair and blue eyes. Yet another foundation of the Nazi belief system can be seen to have an esoteric origin, as did the swastika, the Hitler salute, the idea of an Aryan master race, and the view of Jews. A founder of the Thule Society was Rudolf Gladier, an astrologer who changed his name to the grand founding baron von Timmendorf. His demands for a revolution against Jews and the Marxists turned the Thule Society into a focus for the anti-Jew, anti-Marxist German master racers. Out of all of this came the German Workers' Party, which would one day become the Nazi Party. Another committed occultist and friend of Sebald Dendorf now becomes highly significant. This was Dietrich Eckhart, 
a heavy drinking, drug taking writer who believed he was here to prepare the way for a dictator of Germany. He met Hitler in 1919 and decided he was the one, the Messiah, he was looking for. It was Eckhart who was credited with Hitler's advanced esoteric knowledge and probably the black magic ritual which plagued him so completely into the prison water vibration. From now on, Hitler's power to attract support grew rapidly. Eckhart wrote to a friend in 1923, follow Hitler, he will dance, but it is I who have called the tune. We have given him the means of communication with them. Do not mourn for me, I shall have influenced history more than any other German. Hitler was also a member of another esoteric secret society, the Luminous Lodge of the Luminous Lodge or Vril Society. Vril was the name given by the English writer Lord Bulwer Lytton to the force which he claimed awakened people to their true power and potential to become Superman. In 1933, the rocket expert Willie Ley fled from Germany and revealed the existence of the Vril Society and the Nazis believed that they would become the equals of the supermen in the bowels of the earth by use of esoteric teachings and mind expansion. They believed this would re reawaken the royal force sleeping in the blood. The initiates of the royal society included two men who would become infamous Nazis, Heinrich Himmler and Hermann Goring. Royal members were convinced they were an alliance with mysterious esoteric lodges in Tibet and one of the so-called unknown Superman who was referred to as the King of Fear. Rudolf Hess, Hitler's deputy Führer until he made his ill-fated flight to England in 1941 with a dedicated occultist and a member with Hermann Göring of the Idlewee Society, a black sect which believed in the Nordic master race, Melchizedekian, has worshipped Hitler as the Messiah, although he could do this when the Fuhrer was hardly blue-eyed and blonde-haired, it's not clear. Hitler had the same problem in equating the two, but he would have found some ridiculous explanation for it, I'm sure. Another Hitler obsession was the so-called Spear of Destiny, the weapon alleged to have been used to pierce the side of Yeshua or Christ at the crucifixion. He stole what was claimed to be the spear from the Nazis annexed Austria in 19 when the Nazis annexed Austria in 1938, and it was taken to Nuremberg. The legend says that whoever has the spear and decodes its secrets will have control of the world for good or evil. The one that Hitler stole is now in the Hofburg Museum in Vienna, where there was a major fire in November of 1992, seven days before the blaze, which destroyed part of the Windsor Castle. Another obsessive occultist in the Third Reich was Heinrich Himmler. He was into all manners esoteric and he used his knowledge in the blackest of ways. He was particularly interested in the ruined stones, a system of divination in which stones carrying symbols are thrown or selected, and the choice of combinations read by an expert. It was Himmler who formed the notorious SS and as with the swastika, he chose an esoteric symbol for his horrific organization. The double S or Sieg ruin, which looks like two flashes of lightning. Uh, the SS was a virtually self-contained body and the epitome of all the esoteric knowledge in which the Nazis believed so passionately. Only those considered racially pure were allowed to join and instructions in the esoteric art, including the rune stone, was fundamental to their training. The SS was run and governed as a black magic secret society. Their rituals were taken from others, such as the Jesuits and the Knights Templar. The highest ranking in initiates were the 13 members of the Grand Council of Knights, led by their Grand Master Heinrich Himmler. And the black rituals were performed at the ancient castle of we Wolfsburg in West Salia. They celebrated the festival of the Nordic pagans and the summer solstice. Here they worshiped Satan, Lucifer, Set, whichever name you prefer, the consciousness which was the Nazis and is the elite today.
Prince Bernard, one of the founders of the Bilderberg Group, was in the SS. Esoteric knowledge and black magic pervaded all that Hitler and the Nazis did, even down to the use of pendulums on maps to identify the positions of enemy troops. The original swastika symbol was right-handed, which in esoteric terms means light and creation, the positive. Hitler insisted it be termed so it symbolized black magic and destruction. The mass rallies that Hitler used to effective the mass rallies that Hitler used so effectively were designed with the knowledge of the human psyche and how it can be manipulated. In Satan and Swastika, Francis King says, Hitler's public appearances, particularly those associated with the Nazi Party's Nuremberg rally, were excellent examples of this sort of magical ceremony. The fanfares, military marches, and Wagner music all emphasized the idea of German military glory. The mass swastika banners in black, white, and red filled the consciousness of the participants in the rally with national socialist ideology. The ballet-like precision of the movement of the uninformed party members, all acting in unison, evoked the unconscious, the principles of war and violence, which the ancients symbolized as Mars. And the prime ritual of the rally, Hitler clasped into other banners, the blood banner, carried in the Munich push in 1923, was a quasi-magical ceremony designed to link up minds of living Nazis with the archetypal images symbolized by the dead national socialist hero of the past. The religio-magical aspects of these rallies were emphasized by the fact that their high points were reached after dusk and took place in a cathedral of light, an open space surrounded by pillars of light coming from electric searchlights pointed upward to the sky. If a modern ritual magician of the utmost expertise had designed a ritual intended to invoke Mars, he could not have come up with anything more effective than the ceremonies used at Nuremberg. And what applied then applies now. The esoteric knowledge used by the Nazis for the mass hypnosis on the German people is being used today to extend the global hypnosis on the human race. Symbols, words, colors, sounds, and techniques of which the public are not even aware are being used in the media and advertising to hypnotize us. The propaganda ministry of Joseph Goebbels was based on the esoteric knowledge of the human psyche. He knew that people will believe anything if you tell them often enough and if you can engineer events which create the something must be done mentality in the public mind. He used colors, symbols, and slogans to great effect. The slogans were used like mantras and repeated over and over again, hypnotizing the mass psyche. All alternative views and information were censored and the people were programmed to respond as desired. What is the difference between that and the constant drip, drip, drip of inaccurate and biased information that is fed to us and our children today. It may not have been a swastika on it, but it is still mass hypno hypnotism. It would seem to be a contradiction that Hitler sought to destroy secret societies like the Freemasons and to prevent the use of esoteric knowledge in German society, but it isn't. He knew as much as anyone the power available to those with the understanding and he wanted to keep that for himself. One man the Nazis wanted to destroy was the 33rd degree Freemason, Dr. Randolph Steiner, an Austrian who understood the power of creation and the way they could be used for good and evil. I've come across many conflicting views and claims about Steiner's intent and I've not yet developed an opinion. I feel, however, that he was not as positive as he's made out. He joined the Theosophical Society and the Order of the Oriental Temple, but later formed his own anti-anthroposophical -anthrop society. Armed gangs began to break up Steiner's meeting and threaten the lives of those who listened to him. He fled to Switzerland and died in 1925, a year after his center at Dornach, Dornach 
was burned down by the Nazis. In 1934, all forms of fortune telling were banned in Berlin and later esoteric books were banned throughout Germany. Secret societies were disbanded and even the Thule Society and the German Order, which had together formed Nazism, were targeted. Astrologers were attacked and killed and people like Lanz von Liebenfeld were prevented from publishing their works. This purge had two main motives, to distance, to distance Hitler and the Nazis from the occult in the minds of the public and other countries, and most importantly, to pull up the ladder and stop anyone else from using esoteric knowledge against them as they were using it against others. This is one reason, too, why this knowledge has been suppressed and ridiculed throughout the rest of the world and hidden behind the smoke screens of this world is all there is science and one life and then heaven or hell religion. The role of the esoteric in the rise of the Nazis has been thoroughly underplayed or ignored except in a few excellent books such as Gerald Suster's Hitler and the Age of Horrors. Look deeper into any historical situation and you will usually find the esoteric. John Ruskin, the man who inspired Cecil Rhodes, Alfred Milner, and those who formed the Round Table Secret Society was himself influenced by the esoteric writings of Plato and by Madame Blavatsky. The books of Lord Edward, Ewer Lytton, and Secret Societies in the Mold of the Order of the Golden Dawn. The murder of U.S. President Abraham Lincoln has been explained by some as part of the struggle between competing secret societies, although I don't accept that. One of his close friends, Pascal Beverly Randolph, revealed that Lincoln was involved with a secret called with a society called the Brotherhood of Euless after being initiated into the secrets of sexual magic in the Middle East. Lincoln was also believed to be a high ranking member of the Hermetic Brotherhood of Luxor or of the light. Many of the famous political and economic faces of history and today are masks which hide their true nature and motivation. They are the apparently different faces of the all-seeing eye network. We are watching actors on a stage and someone else is writing their script. Rasputin, the so-called mad monk of the history books, was neither mad nor a monk in the conventional sense. He was a mystic who went through a massive spiritual experience while searching for God in Asia. His psyche was open to some higher or lower consciousness, and this Russian peasant was suddenly a different person. He was capable of healing and had an intense magnetism and legendary sexual drive. A few years after returning to Russia, he had such a hold over the Tsar that he was, in effect, the ruler of the country. Stories have come to light of the black esoteric basis of the KGB in the former Soviet Union. Today, the KGB, under other titles, plays exactly the same role in free Russia, only its name has changed. One report highlights the manipulation within the Kremlin by General Gregory Georgievich Rogozin, who, it is said, uses black magic to program the psyche of those he wishes to control. He heads a highly secretive intelligence group in Boris Yeltsin's presidential team, the Global Intelligence Network is founded on the misuse of esoteric knowledge. The global elite and those who abuse the esoteric knowledge are known also I'm sorry. The global elite and those who abuse the esoteric knowledge also know that if you can control the key energy power points, acupuncture points, and chakra vortexes on the earth's grid, you can massively affect the psyche of the people as the human minds interact with the grid energies, the earth mind. We have seen how the United States of America was founded on esoteric principles and knowledge. 
The Great Seal of the United States is a mass of esoteric symbols, signs, and numbers, including the pyramid and all seeing eyes. The symbol was put on a dollar note during the presidency of Freemason Franklin D. Roosevelt. It is also no coincidence that the Declaration of Independence and the founding of Adam Weishaupt's Bavarian Illuminati both happened in 1776. Numbers and years represent energy vibrations, as do planets, sounds, colors, and symbols. We see some of these symbols in the crop circles and patterns. The genuine ones, those not hoaxed by the forces of disinformation, speak to our subconscious and help to awaken us in ways we cannot yet fully understand. At the higher levels of the global elite, this esoteric knowledge is used to decide when and where events will happen to give them the best chances of success. You will find the same number and sequences throughout ancient texts and beliefs. The list of seven in Revelation have esoteric, not literal meaning. The Bible is packed with such numerology, which the church has taken literally. 13, or the 12 and 1, has great esoteric significance under the laws of numerology and the vibrations they represent, and for other historical reasons too. It means transformation, new birth, a new order. Hence you find Jesus and 12 disciples and the Grand Master Himmler and 12 other knights in the Grand Council of the SS. It is the same knowledge used with different intents. Osiris, the god of Egypt, had 12 followers according to legend. Buddha had 12 disciples, as did the Aztec god Quetzalcoatl. There are the 12 knights of King Arthur. There are 12 knights at King Arthur's Round Table, 12 sons of Jacob, 12 princes of Ishmael, 12 tribes of Israel, 12 signs of the Zodiac. The Bilderberg Group Steering Committee has 39 members, 13 plus 13 plus 13, and it chooses its location on esoteric principles. It is the same with global institutions. Geneva, the home of the League of Nations and many of the global elite fronts, is regarded by the secret societies as one of the planet's most important Earth energy centers. You will find the numbers 13 and 33 in the symbols and logos of many institutions and companies named in this book. Francis Bacon's esoteric code number was 33, and it is used as a code in the Shakespeare plays to indicate that Bacon was the real Arthur. See the works of Manly P. Hall. The 33 represents the degrees in the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry on the Great Seal of the United States and its de depiction on the dollar note. You find 13 steps on the pyramid, the 13 degrees of the Illuminati. The pyramid has 33 stones. On the Great Seal, the bald eagle, the phoenix, until 1841, has 13 feathers on it, 13 arrows on the right talon, and an olive branch with 13 leaves. On the left, in his beak, he has a scroll with the 13 letters of E Pluris Unum, out of many, one. Around this are 13 stars in the shape of the Star of David. There's also a shield with 13 stripes, which represents the original 13 states. On the United Nations logo, the map of the world is arranged in 33 segments, within 13 ears of corn, and the UN building is sited over one of the most sacral springs, or energy points, to the Native Americans. The Proctor and Gamble logo is one of the old Masonic symbols with the bearded man in a circle along, uh, alongside 13 stars. The combined X's in the Rockefeller oil giant Exxon, or Esso, is another symbol of the Scottish Rite. The symbolism is everywhere. The thinking and the basic belief I've outlined for Nazi Germany are only a public manifestation of what is still going on in the secret world of the elite today as they worship the all-seeing eye, the Luciferic consciousness of the fourth dimension. After the war, the Nazis moved their base to South America and the United States at the invitation of the Nazi funder, Alan Dulles, and they helped him to form the CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency. This is a key part of today's global Gestapo and the same black use of esoteric knowledge and worship of the extraterrestrial gods and Superman remain at the core of the CIA and the global elite to this day. What was true of Hitler is true of the upper reaches of the Brotherhood Network. 
even down to the appealing genetic experiments which have continued in the underground bases in the United States and other countries, no doubt including the United Kingdom. We have this farce of a public debate about the morality of genetic engineering while the most horrendous experimentation goes on in secret. I believe using people, including children, who go missing. After the first edition of this book, a correspondent wrote the tale of an Argentine friend who said that Joseph Mangold, the notorious Nazi geneticist, was set up with his own island after the war so that he can so that he could continue his sickening experimentation. The island is on the River Delta in an area called the Tigre, about 50 kilometers from Buenos Aires. Black use of esoteric knowledge under the guidance of the prison warder consciousness is at the peak of the human elite, I'm sorry, is at the peak of the elite human pyramid of global manipulation. I feel that people like Hitler were merely stooges used to create conflict with other stooges like Stalin, and so being bring about the desired post-war outcomes. The super elite are well above the levels of people like Hitler and Stalin in this pyramid. Given the background to the Nazis' belief in the esoteric, the Aryan Superman and its possible connection with the stories of the Melchizedekian, I was interested to come across an organization called the Raelian Foundation. It is based in Geneva, Switzerland, with branches around the world. This is the creation of the former French monitor racing journalist called Claude Rorail, who claims to have met an extraterrestrial group, which he says are the Elohim of the Old Testament. Rael says that he was taken to their planet, and he was told that the Elohim genetically engineered the human race. According to the stories told in the secret 1960 survey of contactees, the ones known as Elohim were the Mekhidadekians. Rael claims to be the Messiah of the Elohim, the guide of guides, and they instructed him, he says, to tell people that they must do everything he says. Oh really, Rael? My reply to the Elohim and to Pot would be unsuitable for a family audience. Rael, the Messiah, guide of guides, said the Elohim are preparing to return to take over the world. Fascinating how close that is to the Nazi belief in the return of the Superman. And what was and what was it that Rael says that the Elohim desired? A world government and currency for the armies to stop fighting each other and come together as a world police force. And for only those scientifically assessed as the intellectually brightest to be allowed to run political office. What's more, only those who pass the intellect test devised by scientists should be allowed to vote and the masses should simply do as they are told with no rights to decide who governs them. I had never heard of Rael or his followers until I was told by a source close to the British Intelligence Network that some of those behind the campaign to discredit me as a neo-Nazi after the first edition of this book were connected with the Rael Foundation and in the UK. That same day, someone else gave me a copy of Claude Rael called The Messenger given to me by, I'm sorry. That same day, someone else gave me a book by Claude Rael called The Message Given to Me by Extraterrestrials. They took me to their planet. The Rael Foundation appeared to be suddenly very shy about the symbol on the front of the book, which Rael said was the symbol of the Elohim. A sticker with another symbol had been used to cover up the original one on its cover. You will perhaps appreciate why when you look at figure 12, which again, is just a picture in my book of uh, the swastika, done in different ways. I'll share it with you when I finish reading. Um, the esoteric knowledge and the things of extraterrestrial master races pervade the elite pyramid and have done so for thousands of years right into the modern world. But I cannot stress too powerfully that esoteric knowledge is neutral. It is not the knowledge we need to challenge, but it's negative use. It can and is used to very positive effects. When I hear Christian investigators of the New World Order condemning all esoteric thinkers and groups as the evil occult, the devil worshippers, it reveals a serious misunderstanding of reality. In my view, and the bigotry that it reveals a serious misunderstanding of reality. In my view, 
and a bigotry that ill becomes them. As I shall discuss in more detail towards the end of this book, the positive use of spiritual knowledge is crucial to building a better world we seek and which we are making a reality. Have no fear. It is built on the foundations of love and respect and emotions, the energies which are sweeping away the blackness of hatred and misunderstanding. In these last three chapters, I've outlined the structures within which the manipulation is coordinated, the means through which the dark forces control it, and the mindset that motivates its behavior. Now we can examine how this is expressed in the world around us and how it affects our lives every day. And that is the end of chapter 10 in the book and the truth shall set you free by david ike titled the super elite the black magicians i hope it was helpful i'll return with another chapter soon